I'm Jordan Winter with Lawrence Times TV, and it's primary election day. We're here at the election headquarters at 23rd and Louisiana Street. Inside, officials are counting votes for the city commission and school board seats. These positions are critically important, with decision-making power on things like homelessness programs, teacher pay, and so much more. That's why we're taking you behind the scenes into how elections in Lawrence work. We're here with County Clerk Jamie Hsu, whose office runs all of the elections running through Douglas County. Thanks for joining us, Jamie. Oh, I'm glad to be here. So give us the basic steps of how these local elections work. Everything is based off checks and balances and auditing. Uh, we are a paper-based county, and so we use a paper ballot. Um, right now, what we're waiting for, the board workers, when they close down the point place, they have to count the ballots, uh, compare those to the number of signatures, and kind of do some auditing. And so that's kind of what we're waiting for right now. You told the Lawrence Times that turnout for odd year primaries is generally low. Only about 10% of registered voters actually cast a ballot. Why is it important for communities to be engaged and active in these local elections? Everybody likes to come vote for president or governor and that's really cool, but the people that are on this ballot decide how much you pay in property tax, decide all kinds of rules and regulations about development, uh, growth, things that really impact your daily life, probably more than president. And so your participation becomes really important because I hear from a lot of people who say, well, my vote doesn't count. Well, maybe if you look at president, among millions and millions of votes, it doesn't. We've had many local elections that have been decided by a handful of votes. Um, so even if 10% more showed up to vote, it could really have an impact on a race. Now, are there any parts of the process that might surprise people? Well, I think um, the complexity. Uh, it, we will have people who work in here maybe temporarily and they're like, I wasn't aware of this. You think when you go vote, you just you sign and you get handed a ballot. But uh, all of the different ballot styles, um, all of the different parts that go into making the whole system, I think would really surprise people. Um, and then also just the amount of work we do that, uh, so everything tonight is unofficial until the official um, canvas on the 13th of August. We do what's called balancing to the ballot. So when we go to there, we're gonna balance the number of signatures, the number of ballots, and we're gonna know that uh, the number of people that voted, we have the same number of ballots. Now, speaking of the number of people that have voted, what have you seen from the turnout today? Well, it's been low, but you know, city school primary in the middle of August is always kind of difficult in Douglas County. A lot of people are gone. Uh, we did see in some point places, especially out in West Lawrence, started to pick up and get some bigger numbers. This, this was a slow election compared to maybe what we went through a year ago. And as county clerk, I know that you've introduced some really innovative initiatives to curb voting barriers. What are those? Well, I think the biggest thing for us is how do we make sure that we kind of take away what I call the secret handshake. Um, you know, there are all kinds of things, whether it's paperwork, whether it's bureaucracy, or even if it's just that when you walk into a polling place, we assume you know what you're going to do, right? So what is it we can do to kind of take away, first of all, kind of that fear of that moment for maybe, say, a brand new citizen, an 18-year-old, but also, you know, as reforms and laws come into place, our job is to enforce those, but also to look at what are the ways that this could impact a person's participation and try, what can we do to lessen that? When voter ID came in, you know, there, we found out there were a lot of people who, uh, especially in like assisted care facilities, who didn't have any type of ID, but it was difficult for them to get to a polling place um, or difficult for them to even get to the DMV. So we went to um, their facility to take their photo, collect their information, get them a photo ID. So we went to them rather than having to go there. That's the type of thing that we try to do is what is it that we can do to be a voter centric and make sure that if you want to participate, we're going to make sure that we make it as easy as possible to participate. 
That's great that you guys are getting more people out to vote. And beyond voting, what are some of the ways that the local community can get involved with local politics? Well, you know, we try to stay out of the political part. Um, the big thing for us is uh, we're always looking for election board workers. Uh, we need people from all parties. Uh, you can start working on election board if you're 16. So it is a great way to get involved is say even before you're registered to vote. Um, that's a huge thing. We, you can see back here, we have all kinds of people that are helping us with the election process. We couldn't do it without what I call the unsung heroes and heroines of election day, which were all the people that checked in everybody today and sat there for 12 hours. They're putting in a 14 hour day. Uh, but because they showed up, you were able to vote and we need people to continue to step up. Well, thank you so much for all of your work, Jamie, for keeping our electoral process efficient and effective. All right, thank you. I'm Jordan Winter, and you've been watching Lawrence Times TV. This episode is made possible by Taco Zone, home of the Cadillac Margarita. With daily specials, rotating proteins, and veggie-friendly toppings, we have something for everyone. Get in the zone. And Vibrolux Media, helping your business to create inspired brand strategies.